What's up YouTube, this is Tube Digger. In this video, I'm going to show you why I prefer to use the MPC software as a plugin within Ableton Live and control it using the MPC Live in standalone mode. I find it a lot more flexible as it allows me to use Ableton, the MPC software and my MPC Live simultaneously. For me, controller mode is only beneficial for things such as file management and certain detailed editing tasks that may be slightly more difficult in standalone mode. And if you guys are interested in doing this yourselves, this video will show you how. So to be able to do this, you will need some kind of USB to MIDI interface. The one that I'm using is an iConnect MIDI. So at one end, it has a standard USB connector that connects to my computer. In my case, I've got an iMac. And on the other end, that splits out to two standard five pin MIDI DIN cables. One of them is MIDI in and the other is MIDI out. So I've got one cable connected to my MIDI in B port on my MPC Live. That will allow me to trigger the MPC Live with Ableton Live if I want it that way around. But if I want to trigger my sounds within Ableton Live and also sync Ableton Live by using the MPC Live or MPCX, I am using my MIDI output A port, okay? So first of all, in the MPC Live, you will need to create a MIDI track. So you just need to click on the MIDI track type here, and that will create a new MIDI program for you. So it's automatically set to MIDI output A, which is where my iConnect MIDI output connector is connected to. So that will now send MIDI data from the MPC Live to my computer. So if I just get my preferences up in Ableton Live, I'm not too sure what it is on a PC, but on a Mac, it's just command comma, and that's the shortcut for the preferences that will pop up. Um, let's click out of that. If not, it's in live preferences. There you go. So as you can see, it's recognized my USB MIDI interface, iConnect MIDI in there. So as long as it shows up in here and also down here, you don't need to drop down any of these menus just make sure everything is set to on there and you're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna click out of that. Now I'm just gonna delete these other tracks just so it's a bit cleaner. So now I'm gonna load in the MPC software within Ableton Live, okay? Or rather the VST plugin version. So on my computer or on my Mac, it's within VST and local, okay? So just drop that down again, there you go, MPC. So there's the MPC software or the MPC plugin. So I'm gonna choose the track type within the MPC plugin to plugin. Now I can choose whatever plugins I want. So I'm gonna choose an MPC expansion and I'm gonna choose the 809. So it's kind of like a hybrid 808-909 drum machine. So I double click that and now I've got that loaded in. So now I can just trigger that with my MPC Live. So this is where it gets flexible, okay? So first of all, I can either choose to record those notes into the MPC Live, as you would when just using it in standalone mode without triggering an external device or a computer as I'm doing now. Okay, so all perfectly in sync. So I can use my note repeats. So now we've got those notes recorded into the MPC Live, we can also record them into Ableton Live. So all we need to do is arm the record in Ableton Live, press play on the MPC Live, and you'll see those notes getting recorded. Now you'll notice that there's a bit of a mismatch in the timing there. So to correct that, we need to go to preferences again, we need to go down to here where it says MIDI ports. We need to go to input, okay? And we need to put the MIDI clock sync delay into a negative value of some description, or at least I do in my case. It might be different for your particular computer. So I'm gonna press play back again on the MPC Live. You're gonna hear the metronome on Ableton Live fall out of sync with the notes that are 
recorded here and thus being recorded into Ableton Live. In fact, I'm going to delete those. Okay, so I'm going to press play on the MPC Live. You'll hear that sync uh, be slightly out again. But as I bring this down into a negative value, you'll hear that timing correct. Okay, so all good. Let's record those notes into Ableton Live. Okay, so you can see they're still a bit off the grid. Let's actually take it out of sync and press play back in uh, Ableton Live. So they are off the grid, but um, they don't sound too bad. So what I'm going to do is select all of the notes. Let's just move the plugin out of the way. And I'm going to press Command. I don't know what it is on a PC, but I'm going to press Command U, and that's the shortcut to quantize on a Mac. OK. And there you go. So even though there is that little bit of sync delay and you have to adjust it in the preferences, as I showed you in here, in this MIDI ports input section. All you need to do if things are still a little bit out is quantize them. But even without the quantization, those weren't too bad and it did have quite a nice live feel to it. So that doesn't really bother me too much, but I know some of you guys out there want things to be bang on the grid uh, and that's fair enough. So that's how you would do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you by comparison why it's not good to use your MPC Live in controller mode when using either the software or Ableton Live because you can do everything this way without having to use that USB port that comes out the back of your MPC Live to enable you to go into controller mode. I just use controller mode literally for data transfer um, and for doing sort of fiddly tasks from time to time that are going to take ages doing it in standalone mode. But yeah, that's basically how you can control Ableton Live via your MPC Live. I just want to show you it the other way round. So if I press menu and I press sync up the top here in my MPC Live and I press MIDI clock, uh, just go back to that. You've got the option to choose Ableton Link. That's only for Wi-Fi, okay? I don't have Wi-Fi in my studio. I'm using Ethernet. Uh, so I can't show you that, unfortunately. So I'm going to choose Sync to MIDI Clock. Now if I press Play in Ableton Live, so it kind of corrects itself after a few milliseconds. So it's really not a big deal for me. I think a lot of people really want it bang on and precise and to be dead on uh, perfect, but you know, it's pretty much there. And as you can see, there's plenty of adjustments that you can make to get things perfectly in sync. So that is MPC Live, Control in Ableton and vice versa. Now let's go into controller mode. So I've pressed menu and then I'm pressing my MPC icon up here. Don't save. It's looking for the computer, it's now connected and because we've got the software open within Ableton Live, it just works the same way as we would have if we had the MPC software launched. But as I said, the issues with this is you can't press play. It won't allow you to control the software within Ableton Live. You can't use your transport buttons on the MPC Live. You can trigger the pad still. Okay, so I find it's a lot more limited in controller mode. If we now quit Ableton Live, I'm not gonna save. Uh, let's open up the actual main MPC software. And now we get access to the transport controls. But I know a lot of you out there prefer Ableton Live but would also like to use the MPC software within it. So that's why I've done this video really, so I can show you that is how you do it. I've seen a lot of comments and questions on, uh, well, on YouTube and on Facebook user groups for the MPC Live and MPCX, 
where people are saying they can't run the plugin or they're having trouble using the hardware as well. That's how I do it. That's the way I recommend you should do it. I don't particularly use the MPC software on its own. Uh, as I said before, I just use it to do fine detail editing tasks that might take a little bit longer, things like automation, which aren't yet implemented in the standalone version of the MPC Live or MPC X. But yeah, I'm gonna quit out of that. I'm gonna go back to Ableton Live. Okay. And now I'm gonna uh, load in the MPC plugin again. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you use audio units or VST, depending on which one you installed when you installed your MPC software. I installed both. So there you go. We've gone back into standalone mode on the MPC Live, but we're running the software within Ableton Live. So again, I need to reiterate this. I find it's a lot more flexible using the MPC software as a plugin within Ableton Live because you get all the features that you've got within Ableton Live, all the warping and all the wonderful stuff that Ableton Live does, but you've also got all the features that the MPC software does and you get access to your MPC Live or MPC X all simultaneously. So I'm going to put it back into external sync mode so I can control Ableton Live with my MPC Live. So when you want to control your MPC Live or MPC X via Ableton, make sure you're not doing both at the same time and you play back because this will happen. It's not a major disaster or anything, it's just that it will glitch. So you can see now Ableton is jibbing out. So we've got a MIDI feedback loop basically. So we just, we can't stop on either device. We could get rid of the external sync from Ableton or just go back to your MIDI clock. Luckily, it doesn't glitch so much that you can't change it on the MPC Live and just switch that to off because now we just want to control Ableton Live via the MPC Live again. There's just a couple of things that I wanted to show you additional to that. Let's again switch to plugin track type and let's choose, uh, let's choose that um, 809 again. And let's put in a similar sequence as I did before. So the other flexible thing about this is that you've got your notes in the MPC Live, recorded as MIDI data, of course you can then record those back into Ableton Live, either as MIDI onto your MPC track. So let's arm the record, press play back on the MPC Live. So there you go, you've got those notes in Ableton. So you can now sample those as audio, it's just picking up my voice there as well at the same time. And of course you can also record the audio of that into Ableton Live. So there you go, we've got audio recorded from that plugin into the MPC Live. We've also got it recorded into Ableton Live as audio. We've also got the MIDI data or the MIDI notes recorded into both MPC Live and Ableton Live. Additionally, you can also freeze your track in Ableton Live on a Mac. I don't know what it is on a PC, but you can hold Alt, grab your clip, and that will convert that automatically to audio. And then you've got a nice big fat sample of those 809 drums. Of course, you're not restricted to Ableton Link. Uh, you're using good old fashioned MIDI, so you can use it in any other door that uh, allows you to run you know, MIDI devices in a similar way to this. Any comments or questions, please drop them in here. I'm also doing Skype lessons, $45 per hour. You will learn similar things to this. I'm happy to do complete beginners and also do advanced stuff for people that are a bit more familiar with the MPC format. So please do get in touch if you want Skype lessons. Please do check out my Patreon. Please like, subscribe and share. And thank you very much for watching. Let's go. 
to 1,000 subscribers and beyond. This is Tube Digger, and I'm out.